Welcome to 5-Minute Reviews. Brett Day here has been reviewing the Sony A1. What do you think of it, man? Oh, man. Lots to go over in such a short amount of time. Um, the Sony A1, which is right here, is honestly a fantastic camera from Sony. Um, there are so many things to like about it. A couple of things that need to be fixed. But overall, this has been a fantastic camera in a short amount of time. I've had it. So talk to us about the ergonomics. You're saying it's similar to the A7S III, right? Yes, absolutely. And to me, the A7S III is perhaps one of the best or was the best Sony camera for ergonomics. And the Sony A1 has continued that and has actually made it a little bit better by rounding out the grip on the front of on the uh, side of the camera. Um, you can actually wrap your hand around this really nice and get a really good grip on it now. Um, on top of that, all of the buttons and dials just fall so nicely into place. Uh, it just feels wonderful to use. So talk to us about the build quality. We've always had problems with Sony sensors getting pretty dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, were you seeing that at all with this? Absolutely not. Um, I know when the A7S III came out, they Sony improved the uh, build quality in the ceiling, and that has transferred over into the A1 as well. So I use this camera out in various conditions, snow, rain, blowing winds. Um, and after a week of use, there's zero dust on the sensor. It's really impressive, and Sony have done a good job. And Sony also put their touchscreen into this, right? Yes, absolutely. It's got the uh, 1.44 million dot touchscreen with the new menu system, which just makes it so much easier to use. Now, here's the big question. Autofocus, right? Which mm -hmm. one's better, Canon or Sony? So I would say in general use, the Canon and the Sony systems are about on par in great to mediocre lighting. The autofocus system in the Sony A1 is really good. It's fast, it's accurate, it tracks really well. Um, but when it comes to the more specialized modes like animal and the new bird detect, uh, Canon definitely has an upper edge here. But the bird detect autofocus in the Sony seems to be like it's still in beta mode. So what about in low light? Like, what were you finding? Uh, low light is a mixed bag, honestly. Like I say mediocre light. Like if you were a sports photographer in an arena doing basketball, you'll not have any issues. However, if you're in a room that has low light, dim light, um, then the auto focus does slow down, but it's still very accurate. And you said that face detection is still something that works even when someone has a mask on, which is really important right now, right? Yes, absolutely. With a mask on, the camera will detect a face. It will not find the eye. But as soon as a mask comes off, the autofocus system snaps straight to a person's eyes. And did you have any problems with overheating at all? Like I know some folks like to do some crazy stress tests that aren't very practical, but what did you find? I did do a crazy stress test. I tried to completely fill up the 160 gig memory card, um, took two minutes and 45 seconds to do that. And at the end of it, the temperature warning was flashing. So if for whatever reason you did feel the need to do that, that's just something to keep in mind. Hmm. So overall, I mean, this seems like a pretty great camera. Do you think it's worth the price? It's around 6,500 bucks, right? Yeah, it's $64.99. It is a fantastic camera. There are some revolutionary features on here. The new uh, sensor is phenomenal. The electronic shutter is unmatched by any other camera. Um, it's definitely worth it if you're a professional wildlife or a professional sports photographer, perhaps a photojournalist who can go out and easily make their money back. Otherwise, I would say there are probably some cheaper options on the market for you. All right, we've got about a minute left. So this has a 50 megapixel stacked CMOS sensor that's full frame. Talk mm -hmm. to us about why that's so important and what you thought about the image quality. But the reason why it's so important is that the memory that's stacked to the back of the sensor allows incredibly fast readout speeds. That enables this camera to capture, capture 50 megapixel images uh, at 30 frames a second, which is just absolutely phenomenal. The image quality is amazing. I, I can't say anything bad about the image quality. The colors are great. The images are detail filled. Um, and honestly, with the electronic shutter, you're, you're not going to get any rolling shutter issues anymore. What do you think of the high ISO prints? The prints were fantastic. Um, I've done a couple of prints at ISO 6400. Again, detail filled, looked fantastic. And you can even shoot up to 12,800 and still get very respectable results. All right. Thanks a lot, Brad. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. Anytime.